Hey, David, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Hey, Brian, how are you? Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Um, so a bit of background, 10 years uh, tech experience and um, working in uh, companies such as Microsoft, Dell, Oracle. Previous to tech, I was working in personal training and fitness. And previous to that, um, I was working in construction. So fell into sales, but it's been a good journey since I've been here. Um, and I'm now head of sales here in Kaseya the last um, year and two months. Cool. Why sales for you? Oh, great question. Well, I think for me, um, Brian, it was great opportunity to progress my career. Um, at the time, I was working in the fitness industry, and I didn't see much progression um, in the industry at the time. Yeah. And a friend of mine goes to me, Dave, you talk a lot. Why don't you do sales? <laughs> talk a lot. <laughs> little did I know. Little did I know. So, and that was a compliment, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think there's one in there somewhere. But um, yeah, so I just wanted a career where it was going to give me progression and going to give me kind of stability, financial stability too. So yeah, that's the reason why I took the leap into sales. Yeah. And was there a lot of skill transfer or mindset transfer between fitness and sales? Well, you know what? The, the, The mindset was actually, I think the fitness prepared me for it because in fitness, you had to be disciplined. You had to have good willpower. You know, and you're also setting yourself goals um, on an ongoing basis with the fitness. And you're doing that with your clients too. So from the mindset aspect, I think it prepared me well going into sales. Um, but yeah, no, boy, did I learn that obviously talking sales wasn't going to get you to the, the holy grail. So I think for me, um, Brian, I'm an extrovert. So like for me, I needed to kind of hone them skills back and like, you know, it was one thing that I, that did stand out to me was, you know, and um, listening is more valuable than talking. You've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> and did it take a while to get used to that? Because in fitness, yeah. they kind of want you to talk, don't they? A hundred percent. They want you to push. They want you to push, you know. And um, so it did. I think like when, when I started my career, I started in telesales. So um, in that, I was working telecommunications, broadband, selling mobile, um, landlines, that kind of stuff. So I think it took me about six to nine months like to kind of adapt to it and get into kind of the flow and understand how, like for me, my position and my approach that suits me best. Everybody has a different approach. Everybody has yeah. a different kind of way of approaching a conversation or approaching a customer call. So it did take me a bit of time to do that. And I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity I got with Aircom. They gave me that time to develop and nurture them skills. Still learning, but Brian. Yeah, we are. We all are, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, of course. And why leadership? Why'd you get into leadership? Yeah, it's a really good one. Um, so throughout my career, because I didn't start in sales, um, people I've been fortunate to have people around me that have helped me all the time. Like so any organization I've gone in, I've people that have helped me and um, improve my skill set and um, whatever it might be. Um, and what I wanted to do was, Brian, I wanted to eventually give back. And the way I saw being able to give back help and support was by going into leadership and being that resource for people who are like me coming in to an industry where they're coming from maybe fitness, construction, finance. So that was one of the main drivers of me going into leadership so I can use the experience and the skills that I got um, and I can transfer them and help other people along that journey too. And that's for me, um, the most satisfactory part of my job, like, you know, results and numbers are good. Okay. But I think I get the most satisfaction from seeing people progress and develop their career and um, by going on that journey together and helping them along that journey. And was there anything that you found out about sales that kind of surprised you that was kind of the opposite of what you thought it was and what you've been heard or you assumed it was? Yeah. Like, look, listen, I think people have the perception that sales is, is sleazy. You know, they, they have that perception that it is. Um, and you know what? When, when I actually got into sales and I actually started working like multiple companies, I really, really then realized like, like it's a skill in itself and you have to keep on obviously evolving that skill. And like for sales people, like for them to be at the forefront of obviously evolving technology, evolving skills, evolving methodologies, there's a lot of work that goes in that. Um, and I didn't at the start, like, you know, I just thought, yeah, we pick up the phone, talk to the customer. Hey, Mr. Customer, how are you doing? Do you want to buy this? 
you know. Um, but there's a lot more that goes into it. And I, I learned that along the journey is a lot more, obviously, research, preparation, you know, how to handle objections, you know, negotiation. Um, and it's really, really, really kind of, for me, opened up my eyes when I got into these organizations and seeing that because, you know, you see the Glen Gary, Glen Ross, ABC, you see the kind of Wolf of Wall Street, that kind of stuff, you know. So, yeah, that was probably the, uh, the eye opener for me when I moved into it. Yeah, because I think those movies give it a bad reputation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street, that, that's stealing. It's really not selling. <laughs> You know, and it, it, it's entertaining, and I like the movie. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a prototype for the career I want. No, no. And I think so much of sales is counterintuitive that it's not about us; it's about the client. Hundred percent. It's yeah. about listening, mm. not talking. Mm. Yeah. But I like your fitness background because the the change that people have to go through physically is so analogous to the change they have to go through mentally in sales yeah. mm -hmm. because you get a lot of rejection in fitness. You, you do a lot of work, but you don't see the result immediately. No. Yeah. You see it over yeah. time yeah. and it takes that patience and repetition and stretching yourself a little bit more and not listening to the little voice that says, ah, oh, maybe a day off will do you good, right? <laughs> yeah, have that chocolate bar. It's okay. Have it's that just a one. <laughs> it's only one. How many calories can be in one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that, that's what we're dealing with all day because why make that one more call? Uh, they'll be there tomorrow. I'll be more rested. and pumped up yeah. by tomorrow more prepared yeah like i i think you're dead right brian like how i describe sales to my kind of um team it's like a roller coaster you're gonna go yeah. up and down up and down up and down i think like you know the people who do well in sales are the one who have that mindset okay they really have that growth mindset you know they have that positive attitude okay i think that the most important for me, um, throughout my career, what I've always tried to do is always try to learn, my willingness to learn and be coachable. And I think if you have them couple of obviously characteristics or you have that kind of approach going into sales, you will do very, very successful in sales. You know, you should always, always be learning because you know as much as I do, Brian, like sales and the technologies that we sell and the companies that are obviously evolving, like, it changes all the time. Like, and what I find as well is that you have to be adaptable too, because if you look at the buyer's journey now compared to the way it was maybe two years ago, one year ago, it's always, always changing. And you have to evolve to that. And like, you know, you have to understand that, you know, persistence is going to be the key and resilience is key as well in that. Awesome. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. And have you had, how have you applied that to sales? Is it something that you just have a regular routine like you did in fitness, which was probably early mornings? Yeah. Clearly, yeah. you're still in shape, and so you probably have oh, good uh, control over your diet. Let me see my top half here, Brian. Yeah. Let me see my top half. <laughs> you're covering it good. <laughs> it's the reason why I'm wearing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now look at your, your really, I think it's. For me, it's having the routine and becoming the consistency as well. So, like, how do we, because so sales is very stressful, okay? What I tend to do in the morning times, I, I get up in the morning and I go to the gym, you know, always make sure that I'm going to the gym in the morning time. What I'm starting to get back into now doing again is meditation. So, my routine is basically get up at roughly 6.30, do five, 10 minutes of meditation, then go to the gym go to the gym, do a workout for an hour, then come in, I'm set up for the day. I'm already having them good endorphins um, as well. But I think as well, Brian, okay, you have to be good at time management and planning, you know, and yet like, you know, people who think sales is a nine to five, like it's, it's not going to work for you now. It really, really isn't like, you know, you can see I haven't got much hair left because like when I took on the role in Kaseya, like I was doing like six to 10, you know, and, you know, it's just, you have to have that kind of um, drive in you, the ambition in you as well. But it's also, as I mentioned, but time management, plan, structure, if you have that in place and that routine in place, you know, and doing that day in, day out, like it's funny you mentioned earlier on, okay, with the gym, okay, 
and um, you're not going to get them big muscles if you don't keep on doing the sets or the reps you have to keep on doing it you know and whether it's a day where you don't feel like getting up out of bed you're going to have to keep on doing it you know so and once you do that and um, there is at the end of it the rewards at the end of it but it is it's a it's a resilience game i think yeah because <laughs> it's a lot like that because if you if you get on the scale twice a day you know it could be especially big guys it's a lot of easily three or four pounds one way or the yeah. other right yeah. depending on how much water you're drinking and what exactly. all the other stuff you're doing yeah and it, and if it goes up you think you're failing instead of it just being the norm and that's much like what sales you get a hang up you or a deal gets stalled or delayed yeah and you know could you have prevented it maybe but you, you what you can't do is let something bad transfer to something else bad i love it yeah and i, I think what really good sales people do they do a lot of reflection as well you know on that like as you mentioned there like if, if something is not working one obviously deal what do they do in that day or what happened in that day? What were the aspects and how can I transfer that into another day to prevent that from happening? I think that's a big thing. I think like one of my mentors said to me that obviously sales is an awareness, self-awareness and deal awareness. And if you have that awareness, um, you will be successful also. And I think that's a big part to play in sales as well, going about being, the, being aware um, also. So yeah, there's lots of aspects to it too, you know. Well, well, that's it. The awareness at the right time. Yeah. Yes. A lot of us get the awareness after we're told. <laughs> yeah. That's not awareness. That's not <laughs> reconciliation. <laughs> yeah. You need the awareness before you're told. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because the other person is probably putting on a pretty optimistic representation of where it is. Yeah. Course, Maybe yeah. honest. But it might yeah. be on the, the optimistic side of honest. <laughs> and That's we're happy is. we want to hear <laughs> the optimistic side of yeah. And, and then yeah. then we don't do kind of the details and the and all of yeah. a sudden it stalls and stuff. That that awareness is critical because certainly early in our career we're bad at it. Mm. Yeah. 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 What's yeah. your why? What what excites you? What gets you motivated? What brings you into the office every day? Keeps you late at night? Yeah. So there's just two there's two ways, right? Um, one um is like you know helping my guys and girls on my team progress and develop their career and reach the heights that I believe they can reach the potential to reach deep in belief and they can reach sorry. Um, and then my other one then is it's it's a personal aspect, okay? It's it's my mother. Um, want to make her proud and um, want to go day in, day out and keep on kind of um, escalating my career to where I need to be. Um, and the reason being is because, you know, like I believe in my team, my mother also believed in me day in, day out and pushed me day in, day out as well. So um, they're my two boys um, of why I got up out of bed every day. But look, I really, really enjoy sales. I, I love, I, I, do you know what? It's, I, love, I love the chase, you know, um, I love the kind of back and forth with the customers, you know, um, the negotiation, hand objections, you know, I love all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so I use it as a bit of a game too, you know. Well, does that come from the fitness side? Were you play sports or were you just? Yeah. yeah. yeah what what yeah, sport? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, soccer. Yeah, soccer. Okay. Big soccer. Big soccer player. Big soccer fan. Man United fan for my sins these days. But um, yeah, so I've that's played sports since a young age, like since I'm like four or five years of age. Played soccer. Yeah. Well, so. well soccer is a good one because it's team oriented. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it's yeah. fast moving, mm. and high engagement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you got to think very fast, which is a lot like yeah. sales, right? Yeah. Sales, you're on yeah. your feet. You can yeah. do all the planning and research and stuff, mm -hmm. but then the showtime. <laughs> I love, I love that. I think that's it, it's a great. And I say to my guys as well, like you know, like when you're doing your kind of your call, you never know what's going to come around the corner. You have to be able to think on your feet. You know, you have to be able to do that. And I think like. With the soccer as well, and it's going back to the leadership, I think the soccer gave me that foundation too because you're in a team, 
you're doing training twice a week, you're game on Sunday, you know, you're supporting each other, you're helping each other, you know, and, you know, you win as a team, you lose the team, as you know, um, but it's also obviously camaraderie after as well, you know, letting you know that someone has your back. So I think that did as well, like, you know, um, preparing me going into leadership also. And what do you think is your, your strongest characteristic as a salesperson? My strongest characteristic, I think, for me, okay, is empathy, you know, and being able to put myself in the customer's shoes, you know, understanding from their perspective, you know, that's one, and being able to relate to them also. Um, and I think for me, like, you know, as if you do that, right, and the customer obviously force feels you want to understand them okay and um, you're there to potentially solve a problem too um, and like look for me i always try to kind of go from that kind of approach the educational approach approach to the customer's conversation consultive um, and look that's that's one thing that's probably helped me in my career um, and it took me time to find that book well that's it's both the hardest and the most powerful mm. because you know, certainly as teenagers, we're probably not that empathetic, right? Yeah. And maybe we kind of learned it in college because maybe we're closer together. Yeah. And I guess in soccer, you, you, it's a lot of empathy because you're trying to keep the ball away from the opponent. Mm. So you're mm. thinking about how are they going to try and steal it from you? <laughs> and you can't pick it up. You can't pick it up. You got to use your feet. <laughs> You got these perfectly <laughs> good arms, hands, but you got to kick the damn ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you think you, you develop that? Because especially as a manager, it's critical because mm. I think when you're coaching reps, you kind of have to play the client mm. so that they can mm. see what's going to happen and where they are to get mm. that awareness. Mm. Mm. Because if you're both on the same side, you're like, Makes sense to me. Yeah. 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 How do you, how did you develop it? Develop from my own perspective, Brian. Or, for, for, how did you well, develop empathy? Because empathy how, is, it's a very advanced yeah. skill. A lot of people think they have it, but it, mm. it's really powerful in sales because you're, you're seeing the deal from both sides. Yeah. And mm. if you can't see the deal from both sides, you're going to guess. Hmm. Mm, yeah so so for me it's a couple of things so from like when i go into any deals what i'm trying to do is, is obviously be devil's advocate with the deal as you mentioned there a lot of people a lot of customers will be like very optimistic okay so what you need to kind of do is take a step back and be present of what they're saying to you okay and um, firstly and then i think it's another thing as well is I think it's just from over the years going into calls and approaching calls and learning from not being that, not having that approach, having a different approach and going in with your agenda, you know, going in what you want to get from that call, you know. And I think from getting born on many, many calls um, has helped me kind of develop that over time. So it's a lot of obviously practice. It's a lot of failings, um, Brian. And so also as well, it's a lot of time, as I mentioned earlier on, reflecting um, after the call on, okay, what was said there? Like, what I try to get my guys to do um, is do like a SWOT analysis on a deal or a call, you know, so they can see where they are with that. Um, and that then helps them going into the next car, help them understand where they think it might be. So there are a couple of aspects that I've done over the years to try to help me and um, build that muscle. But I'm still learning as you go, you know, um, and I'm sure I'm going to learn more as I even develop even further in my, in my career too. And that's what I found was <clears throat> that thinking and analyzing and what you call it, SWOT analysis, whatever model you use. Mm -hmm is really kind of sitting down with the deal, going through the history, and then even speculating on what you think will happen and why. Mm, mm, that mm. is so critical. And I don't think a lot of managers allow time for that anymore. Mm, they think no. it's just, just do more instead of better. Like, uh, like I think like, you know, I, one thing, one thing for me, like, you know, since I've, I've been in sales and I, I, 
I get some aspects of it, okay, I do. I get some aspects of it, but the belief that we have to have like more KPIs, like create more steps in our process, like the well, belief it's like that doing drills do and never playing the game. It, it, exactly, you know, it's it's that's the thing. Like, and for me, like you know. I don't kind of understand that, like, you know, they think that drives business outcome. Now, we understand there is some elements of it that do, okay? Not saying they don't, not saying they don't, but I think what, like, what I try to do and what I've tried to do as a a leader is remove the friction, okay, from the sales reps, enable them, give them more time back, you know? And the reason why to give them more time back is to exactly do that, you know, to go in and analyze, okay, and do a deal clinic, understand the deal, understand the granularity of the deal, okay? And then what happens then, I believe, is that, you know, once they do that, you're going to get more quality pipeline. You're going to get bigger deals. You know, you're going to be able to get that, you know. And I always had this saying, okay, my football manager says this to us uh, years ago, Brian. It's obviously quality over quantity. And and in no other profession does that match better Mm, mm. than in sales. Because we could be busy 24 hours a day, but it doesn't mean we're being effective. Effective. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I got to take, how do you react when you lose a game of soccer or football? Do you really want to know? You already (laughs) told me. You didn't have to say a word. (laughs) That that face. It was moist. It looked like you were going to rip my head off. (laughs) No, look, listen. Yeah, look, you know, been very, very competitive, okay? Yes. <laughs> I don't like losing games, right? But you know what? Like, if we do lose, I want to take the learning from that loss. That's that's the thing. So if I lose a game, Brian, but I learned something from losing that game, okay, that's going to help me in the future, but then I don't really see that as a loss, you know, in some aspects. Yeah. You know, that's the way I think of it. But like but when you like lose losing. a deal, yeah, it, it yeah, you know, you wear it, yeah. right? You wear it on yeah. your soul. Of course, of course. I think like you know, like losing the deals, okay. Um, and there's, there's pros and cons to it, right? As we all know, like losing deals. If you learn from that deal, okay, and you can implement and the tactics that you can implement and other deals are going to make it successful. Well, then do you know what? Look, listen. I'd, I'd lose five deals. Am I going to win 15 deals? You know, that's the way I, w- right. I would look. Yeah. You know? uh, you know? I think the, the key thing is that you're emotionally attached to winning, which means you will go above and beyond to make mm. the win possible. Yeah. Yeah. When you get yeah. these even keeled people who aren't competitive, who are going through the motions, they're checking the boxes and then, then they have the win some, lose some attitude. Are they going to stretch and really create something there? No. No, no they're definitely not. You know, I, I remember when I was an, an account executive um, going down and, you know, 11, 11.59, staying there to get deals closed before I went into Q2, you know, getting that kind of stuff. And as you said, it's a certain type of character. You, you've mentioned there, it is a certain type of character that succeeds in sales. Um, but yeah, so uh, interesting. Would you ever hire somebody who's not competitive? Mm, I I'm not saying that I wouldn't depend, depending on obviously the, the characteristics, depending on what they show me in the interview and that kind of stuff, you know, um, like for me, if I look at my team at the moment, okay, who I have in there, I've got a couple of people in there who are very competitive. Okay. And I've got a couple of grads. Okay. Who came from college. Okay. And it's great to see because what's the happening is, okay. Even though, the grads mightn't have that competitiveness when you're interviewing them, okay, in the background. When they've came in and they've set beside and see the guys and girls in the team who are, you know, they kind of adapt to that. And it's great to see that. So, yeah, I, I would hire people um, who aren't because I've done it before and they've came in and they've shown that they're competitive because I think it's 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 like the saying is uh, you want to surround yourself with the people of who you want to be, you know, and if you surround the grads with them kind of people, if you have an ambition and drive to get into sales and you surround them with them kind of people, it's going to have a ripple effect. 
you know. Um, but my first preference, if you're going to put a gun to my head, my first preference, I like competitive people coming in. Yeah. Well, there's got to be some kind of passion, some kind of emotional driver. Mm. Because we're connecting with other people. And that's what mm. connects us to other people is mm. commonality and caring. Mm. Mm. And yeah. if you're detached from those emotions, people sense it. Yeah, That's more like the call center, the customer support, where they're, they're empathetic and helpful and stuff. But they move on to the next one. Yeah. In yeah. sales, especially when you're, you're investing your time at your risk. Yeah. You only have time. Of course. And if this deal isn't closable, then it can be a waste of time. Yeah. 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 Well, what I do you wish you time. did differently when, if you had to do your sales career all over again? Start it earlier. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah, no, look at this. I, I started earlier. Um, I think, yeah, that's like I really, really, really regret not getting into sales after um, my civil and structural engineering job, you know. Um, but look at this, everything happens for a reason, really, really does, you know. Um, but yeah, started earlier. So you really owe that guy who told you you talk a lot. Don't owe him anything now, no. No, he's already paid back in Guinness Point. Don't Has worry. He, <laughs> he's still showing up at five saying, remember me? <laughs> you gone to bar, Dave. Remember me? <laughs> yeah. If you were to talk to, you know, the young people who are listening. Yeah. What, what's a couple of things that you tell them to, to really yeah. kind of get their career, get that empathy, start looking at those characteristics yeah. and don't wait. To learn yes. Them. Yeah, I think what I would say to them is, don't be afraid to fail. Okay, um, and don't be afraid to kind of um, come out of your comfort zone. Okay, because when you come out of your comfort zone, that's when you grow. And also as well, um, use the rejection that you get um, from whatever call it might be, and turn that into a positive. And also remember that you know sales itself. Um, it's going to have ups and downs, but the rewards when they do come are going to be tenfold. And, you know, the, the progression that you have in sales um, and the opportunity it really, really is um, exciting. So that's the bit of advice I would give anybody coming in. Cool. Hey, David, I really appreciate your time today. Where can people go to connect and follow you? Yeah, you can catch me on, obviously, uh, LinkedIn. Um, and you can also um, Twitter as well, David Martin on Twitter.